I'm going to be speaking out of the Interpersonal Communications Advanced Manual. My objectives determine reasons for someone's substandard performance and coach the person to improve performance. The scenario I will use today is that I have asked Kate to work with me on this, to listen to my discussion, and that I'm going to coach her on how to become a better speaker. First of all, I'm going to talk about what the coaching process is. Then I'm going to do a three to five minute scenario with Kate. And then we're going to have uh, round robin just talking about, well, how did it go? And could I have said something different? Or did you like what I said? Or could I should have said something different? Stuff like that. So well, if you make me cry, you'll know right away that it wasn't the right thing. <laughs> I won't be nasty. <laughs> anyway, where you start is generally the problem with training somebody that's deficient is that maybe they've had poor, poor training, maybe they've they have bad equipment, maybe they had they didn't have the time. Maybe you've given them a task that they don't have the time to do or anything like that. And finally, maybe they're not motivated. Maybe they, it's not something that's on their radar. Maybe not, they don't think it's important. And you need to know that before you coach somebody. The coaching session determines specifically the reason for the discussion. And in this way, you determine what's lacking, what's deficient, those kinds of things. With Kate, I'm, I'm going to further talk about that, but I'm not going to tell her she's terrible. I, I need to talk about my concerns about her performance, and I'll talk about that during the coaching session. I'll describe the impact the problem has on others. Maybe other people are in, affected by her performance. I'll acknowledge and listen to the other person. I'll listen to Kate, any concerns that she might have. I'll seek her opinion on ways to improve performance. Because it's, it's not just a one way, I'm not just preaching, I'm sharing what I observe, she's gonna talk to me and vice versa. We'll agree on the solution and act actions, what we need to do to take her to the next level with her performance. I can follow up, I can praise positive results, and finally, that's the scenario that I'm going to talk about to set it up. Now, you and I are going to talk about improving your communications performance. And that's where I can talk. Kate, I appreciate you allowing me to come talk to you today. How are you doing? I'm great. Great. I wanted to talk to you about your communication skills. And before we get started, I want to tell you that I think you're an excellent speaker. I think you do a very good job in the club. I enjoy your speeches. I enjoy every time you give a speech. I learn something. And I want to say thank you for that. What I would like to do, I see something in you that maybe you don't see in yourself. I see a really great speaker wanting to get out. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to coach you on some things and some observations that I have learned over years of being a Toastmaster. The first one I'm going to talk to you about is whenever I look at a manual, I will, this is not a good example, but what I do is I will put a little yellow sticky on it or I will write in the corner up here subjects that I might want to write, want to speak on. This is an advanced manual, but I will put topics that might fit that project. And I can either do them on a yellow sticky or I will do them in the margin. Like, well, here's project number four. And I might put up here possible ideas of what I could give a speech. I read it once just to understand the manual. And then I read it the second time to start strategizing. 
I believe that whenever you put down what you're looking for, it's like establishing radar. If you know what you're looking for, you'll find it. The Federal Aviation Administration has radar because it's looking for planes. And because it's looking for planes, it finds planes. So if you're looking for a topic or a, something you want to write your next speech on, if you already know what the topics might be for this manual, you can say, well, speech number three, I've got that over here, and I, I, I want to start gathering it. And when I say radar, if you all of a sudden, if you've got, if you know you're looking for something, that piece of paper has information on it for your speech. That TV program has something on it for your speech. That document, that dog barking, has something for your speech. You could use something humorous from that because you're looking for a subject. Your radar's on, and you hear the dog barking. You say, "You know, that reminds me. Whenever we did such and such, write it down. That's a story for your speech." Oh, okay. Yeah. The other thing I would encourage you to do is step out of the box, and that's what Amalinda just talked to us about. It's going beyond the club. You can go to district conferences. You can go to area contests. You can go to division contests. You can go to district contests. You could even go to international if you're if the time met your schedule and maybe you're on travel or something like that and, and you could say, well, it's going to be in California and I'm going to be in California this month. I could take a few days, go to the conference and see what they do at the international conference. That would take your speaking level to a much higher level because where we have speakers at individual conferences, we used to have regions. Regions were even more powerful than district. International is more powerful than region because the level of competition, the level of presentations gets better and better and better and better. I've given presentations at district all the time. I've given one at region. I've never given one at international. My point is, what's good here may go up higher, may go up higher. And they, they weed out to the very best are speaking at international. So I would consider that. I would also consider speaking at every opportunity you have. Call up the Lions Club, the Rotary Club, the Kiwanis Club, the Knights of Columbus, and ask them if they need a, speak, a speaker. And give them a speech on something that you're good at. No, you, you are good at things. You talk to me about health and fitness and, and nutrition and stuff like that. You could put together a really nice speech to give to those old guys at the at the Sanger Rotary Club or Lions Club. Yeah, actually, I could. You I could hadn't do thought that. about it. You could do that, and every time you speak outside the club, it's a new audience, mm -hmm. and it opens up your skills because you say okay now to prepare for that I need to have this this and this I need to I need to work on this I need to have a real good opening I have a new real good close you're prepared you're over preparing because you're going to go give it to an outside organization mm -hmm. that's just like competing in a contest you don't win a prize but the feeling is the same you're giving it to somebody else and you can look at their, you, know, if you can look at their eye contact, see if they're looking at you, see if they're laughing at your jokes, see if you're, they're listening to your stories. You can tell that whenever you speak to another group. And that raises your skill sets because if you know to look at an audience and you can use that eye contact to go across the audience and up and down and things like that, look at people directly. You learn how to do that in a situation like that, then you come back to Toastmasters and you look like an old pro. <laughs> do you see how using your skills to share in other places? If you, if you judged other organizations, like I'm judging this week at the tournament, down in 
counter. If you were to judge a contest, you would see better speakers than you giving speeches. Every time you see a better speaker than you giving speeches, it makes you a better speaker. Really? Yes. I'm an excellent listener. Well, but that's the point. By using those listening skills, you can observe a better speech or someone giving a speech. You might say, I wouldn't do it that way. I would do it this way. Or, I like the way they did that. I like the way they framed that story. I like the way they opened it. I like the way they closed it. I like the humor they, they stuck in there. You can see what they did, take that and use it in your experience. Now you're becoming a better speaker. You are better organized. You can pull your thoughts together because you know what you're looking for. You can go outside the club to give speeches to where you know that you're speaking to these organizations out there. You can go to conferences and get more, tr more skill sets and things like that. You can, you can just take it to the next level by evaluating and doing judging. Did you have any comments or concerns? Or Actually, I agree with you because Amalinda suggested that I try to do a test speaker for area contest. How so did it feel? It felt great. <laughs> Doesn't it? It felt great. I really enjoyed the venue of the night that Amalinda helped me, helped me find. You know, uh -huh. the area 63? 62, I believe. 60, 60 something. Yeah. So it wasn't it was smaller, but it was the same kind of room that we had our Division E contest for over at the college. But it was smaller, it was in a, in a company. Completely room full of people I had never met, but I don't have a problem with that. But I really enjoyed it, and the audience was awesome. Yeah. The acoustics were great. And then it just so happened that somebody was there who had just lost their test speaker and their contest was the next day. And they gave me an opportunity to step up and do that speech. And I figured, what the heck? Right. So I did, I only had, a, I only had for that one, I only had about 30 minutes to alter a speech that I had given um, previously. Which one did I do? Oh, I did the one on ice uh -huh. uh, in case of emergency, right, right. that number. Right. However, I wanted to get credit for it, so I had to change it to fit fit the rules of a different speech, the criteria. Where does it say speech. you have to give a different speech? In the in the book, the criteria is different for different speeches. I know, but it doesn't say you can't use the same speech. But the criteria was such that I had to alter that speech because it didn't fit. I only had, by that time, I only had three speeches to choose from that I'm, I'm still lacking in that book. And, and it didn't fit two of them at all. There was only one that I could modify I looked, what it, so what I did was I looked at the three speeches I still had left to do in my confident communicator, uh -huh. and I looked at the speeches that I'd given already, because they didn't want me to give the same one that I had given that night before, just in case somebody had attended. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you that the first time I did a confident Toastmaster, I gave, this, the subject was compost. I gave 10 speeches on compost. Because I did an icebreaker on compost. I did an organization on compost. I, I did gestures on compost. I did vocal variety on compost. You did gestures on compost? Yes. My compost doesn't gesture, I hope. It's just sitting over there in a big lump.